Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another C++ video. It's been a little while since we did C++. I've been doing a lot of the DirectX series to get that going. Last tutorial we discussed functions and what they are and what are the return types. In this tutorial we're going to discuss basic file input output. So there's lots of reasons why you might want your program to create a file. You might have some configuration options that come right to a file that you can edit and then the next time you run the program it will read that file and it will change your configuration. Or if you're building the next word processor like Microsoft Word or uh, OpenOffice, you of course need to write and read files. And of course, related to video games, you want to save your game so you can save it in a file. And this is just the very basics in file input output. So I created a new empty C++ solution. I'm going to add a new item here. It's going to be a C++ file. And I'm going to call this one main.cpp. I'm going to add that to the source files folder. Okay. So we have an include for our IO stream, what we usually always have. So we include the IO stream and we have using name space STD. So those are the two things that we need to do in every project. Then we have our int main method. I'm going to see out, press, enter, to exit. So I'm just going to provide a message to, you press the enter key to exit, so sin dot get, that will wait for the enter key, and then we return zero. That way the program doesn't automatically close on us. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is write to a file. Okay, so in order to provide any manipulation on files, either writing or reading, we need to include something else up at the very top. So we pound include f stream, file stream. And we're also going to include one more thing, string, so we can work with strings and string functions. Alright, so those are the two things we need to work with files and use strings based on the functions that I'm going to write here. So the first thing we're going to cover is writing to a file. So let's say void write file. I'm going to put that above the main function. So void write file open parentheses. We pass string for the file name. Opening closing curly brackets. Now to write to a file, we need to create a object of of stream. Of stream. You can remember this as output file stream. Of stream file. And opening parentheses, that gives us the constructor that we can call. We're going to pass it the file name to create the file. Now, the good thing to do when you're creating programs is to check for errors or check for problems. So what's a problem that could happen when you try to write to a file, when you try to create a file? Well, there could be permission errors where the file cannot be created. So if file.isOpen, the OF stream gives us that ability to check if it's successfully opened or not. If it is not, you want to provide an error message Stating that there was a problem 
opening the file. Either you don't have correct permissions to create new files or just something happened. So if the file is opened, we can work with it. And we work with it the same way we use C out. So file, lesson, lesson, angle bracket, angle bracket, string to write. Now, what if you want to do multiple lines? The same way you do that with C out and all sorts of stuff, you provide an escape character and N for new line. So we're going to call line 2, line 2. So that slash N is an escape character for new line. So we have entered a new line to this file, and that new line is going to contain line 2. And in print, ending quotes and semicolon. Now always remember whenever you open a file you need to close a file otherwise the file will still be locked. You cannot open a file that's still open so you'll get error messages and problems if you do not close the file. So any time you work with files be sure to close them. So that is writing to a file. So let's call that function from the main function. Write file, and I'm going to call this sample.txt. All right, so we press F5. We run the program. Press Enter to exit. OK, press Enter. Now just to make sure it works, I'm going to provide a C out here in this else at the write file function. So if there was any problems, I want to C out that information. There was a problem opening file and in quotes, two more angle brackets, file name, two more angle brackets, and L. So press F5, we run the program again. We did not get that error message, so it did write that file. So we press Enter. Now let's go and browse that project. Debug file, okay, it's not there. File IO, it's in right there. So sample. String to write line two dot. String to write, line to dot. So we're good. So that's how to write to a file. Now to read the file, we do something similar. Void, read file, string, file name. All right, to read to a file, we create an object of if stream input file stream again call the constructor with the file name that we pass into the function if file dot is underscore open else let's just provide the same information copy the else what's inside the else block from the write file and paste it in the read file. All right, so if the file is open, we want to read the file. So we need to get each individual lines from the file. So I'm going to create another string object, str. And I am going to create an int variable for line number. And it's going to be set to 1 initially. So I'm going to say line number x contains y. Or line number x dash y. So how do you read from a file? There is a function in string. What we included here, there is a function in string 
called get line. And get line, we need to pass in the input file stream, the if stream, and then the string where the line should go to. That's why we have a string object here. Now that gets one single line. So we discussed a few tutorials ago, we discussed a concept called looping. We discussed a for loop, the while loop, the do while loop. And we will discuss another one later on. So the get line only does one line at a time. So one way to condense that is to use a loop. That way we don't have to get line multiple times. So one of the issues with this is what to do when you reach the end of the file. You can no longer get more lines, so what's going to happen when you get to the end of the file? Well, the get line function, you can put that in the loop or if and check to see if it's true or false. If it's false, it has reached the end of the file and we can just get out of the loop or get out of the if and do the rest of our program. So the loop we're going to use is a while loop. So while get line from our file store it in our string object and while we are in the file while we are not at the end of the file while this results into a true expression while we have got a successful line we're going to see out line number and we call the variable line number. We start at line number one. Contains str and and l. An increment line number because we'll get to the next line. All right, so sample.txt, we have created the file. Now let's read file. Sample.txt. Press F5, run the program. Line number one contains string to write. Line number two contains line two dot. So now if we go back to the write file, Let's create two new lines. So escape n, escape n, create two new lines. Line number three contains blank. So that's what will happen when you have more escape characters at the end than you need. So if we keep adding those, line number three contains blank, four contains blank, five contains blank, and six contains blank. And also be sure when you're done getting the file, let's file.close. All right, so that is how you write and read a file. Now if we open up the file again, stranger write in line two. Now let's try to read a read something from sample2.txt. There was a problem opening file sample2.txt. So that is what the error messages are for. You can log them or create a string to display to the user there was a problem opening file x or whatever you want to do if there was an issue opening the file. All right, so this was a pretty quick tutorial. I just wanted to cover the basics of that. If you ever want to create your own save files or some configuration files you want to create and then read it later on for things like that. Next tutorial, we are going to discuss classes and header files. 
So that should be a pretty long tutorial. So I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.